Um, the title of my presentation is Wallflower to Wildflower, and through my paper, you will know why the title is so important. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Brown, and this afternoon I want to take you all on a journey of my self-growth and learning throughout this program. I started looking into gap year programs the summer before my senior year. Most of them sounded just like long vacations to tourist spots. But thinking beyond borders was different. I was intrigued by the prospect of traveling to multiple places while learning how to think differently about the world and ask questions. Before leaving, as I said my final goodbyes to my family in the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., I began to freak out that this amazing journey was happening. Embarking on this program, I really did not know how much about how the world worked and how it was so intertwined and connected. When we arrived at Rocky Road in South Africa, I was already overwhelmed um, with having to meet 16 new people and three program leaders that it took me a while to believe that this journey of a lifetime was about to begin. I took a gap year to explore not only the world, but get a sense of who Jackie Brown really is and find out what I am passionate about. I started out this program the way I approached many group activities in my past. I let everyone speak first, then if I had anything to add or agree with, I shared, and if not, my voice wasn't heard. At that time, I was what you would call a wallflower. Not quite sure what I was doing on this program, where I wanted to go, or how I would get there. During orientation, we had meaningful conversations during seminars. Seminar? What's that? I would ask myself. They weren't as bad as I feared them. In them, I was able to explore questions at their core, get down to the nitty gritty details, um, and one of TBB's favorite ideas, and explore assumptions behind uh, questions and thinking. I learned that asking questions is a much deep, better way of arriving at an answer than trying to answer it concretely. Although it may require deeper thinking, we're all capable of it. It was very eye-opening to learn about how everything in the world was connected. We did an activity during orientation in South Africa about where our clothes were made and how they got to the United States and in the stores for us to buy. I started asking myself, why does making clothes have to be such an international process? Why don't we make more things inside the U.S.? Why do we waste so much money on shipping and handling to get things into the U.S.? The, the same is true for groceries, particularly fruits and vegetables. Previously, I just picked out a shirt if it was cute, not looking where it came from or who made it. Why did I never think about this before? What is my role as a consumer? What role does consumerism play in my life? Now, I will be more conscious about where my clothes and groceries come from. Buying local is harder to do and slightly more expensive, but doing that will make me feel better about my purchases. South Africa was very exotic to me. I had never seen anything like it before. It took me quite a while to get used to seeing such impoverished places so close, so close to the coastline in million dollar houses. Apartheid ended in 1994. The segregation and discrimination between the people of color, blacks, and whites is nearly impossible to miss. Um, like many places with a history of social injustice, South Africa struggles to create an equitable environment in which race truly does not matter. Why are people of color so degraded? The thing that bugs me about people thinking that people of color are always degraded or poor and can't get good jobs or live in nice houses is because it's true. Like Martin Luther King said, it is not about the color of your skin, it is the content of your true character. Before we started our work project, we explored each place we would be volunteering for a month for the next month. Why hadn't I learned anything about public health in school? What is my purpose working in these countries? The first township we got introduced to was Kirtland. It was made up of houses, some made by concrete, and others made by wood and scraps of metal. It was a very emotional experience to be introduced to neighborhoods that were so different than anywhere I had seen. During the walking tour, we were occasionally interrupted by children singing and dancing on the streets and wild dogs roaming wherever they wanted. I began thinking to myself, how can people live like this? Why isn't the government helping them get better living conditions? 
Are the people in the townships happy with their way of life? Are their basic needs being met? Through further exploration during seminars and readings, I found some answers to the questions that had been marinating in my mind. I learned that in the townships, the government paid for their houses. But to move into a house was a long-winded process and involved a lot of waiting. Finding this out sparked even more questions. What can be changed within the process to make it easier? Will overpopulation be an issue in Kerland? What role do people play in the decisions of the government? Working in the township of Kerland made me question thoughts I had living in, I had about living in the US. Why do I have so many nice things in the United States? Why am I constantly thinking I'm living in excess when I'm happy with what I have? Why is the United States such a treasured place to foreign countries and people? Being from the United States, I automatically felt like where I was from was shadowing my potential for help and learning. The first thing people would notice were girl, American, green eyes, and Westerner. Why, why do they recognize characteristics before character? What else were they thinking as they saw me walking? What does being American represent to people elsewhere? Where do these images and expectations come from? Why do I feel so targeted by being a privileged American girl? What does it feel like to have the lens turned on me? I would walk alongside my caretaker, Sandiswa, from the clinic to a house of a patient. During that walk, I noticed she would say hello or acknowledge somebody in the township, and they would be looking at me instead of her. I was uncomfortable at first feeling targeted and not knowing why or how, but then I realized I am different. I do stick out here. I'm white. I told myself to ignore the looks and random howls and whistles I, would, I heard and kept concentrating on work. Another experience that I had that impacted me is when I had to teach students in India. It was so interesting to learn about another country's education system and what better way to explore it than work with the ones than work with the children affected by it. Before we started actually working, we toured around Jaipur and stopped at each work site we would be volunteering in for the next month. I was so shocked at some of the places they called schoolhouses. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. And I was not sure how I would get these students' attention in such inhospitable conditions. Day one started, and I, along with Jamie, Janelle, and Amit, worked at a slum school in Jagatpura. We got to work by tuk-tuks and arrived at 9 a.m. every day. The first day of work was very, very overwhelming. One by one, a new child showed up and giggled <coughs> uncontrollably because we were so foreign to them. I don't know how I would feel if I had a volunteer from another country come in and try and teach me about their language and culture. I would, it would definitely be strange. That's exactly what the children were thinking. Who are these four people? Where are they from? Why are they here? How long will they be here? Where is our normal teacher? Why does it matter what age I am? If I have skills and information that would be useful to others, I should be able to engage them in conversation. The day began with a song called the Good Morning Song that included singing and hand gestures in English. My eyes were wide open for the next three hours of work. I would constantly get pulled on, tapped on, and yelled at by children speaking in Hindi. They would say things like, Apka naam kya hai? Mera naam Abhishek hai? Which translates into, What is your name? My name is Abhishek. We had learned only the basic words in Hindi before we were thrown into work. I had automatically began asking myself questions that included, How is this going to be possible? Will we ever get the children under control to teach them? How are we supposed to teach without supplies in the room? Is this a good learning environment? The building in Jagadpura was a concrete building with one set of stairs that led up to a classroom and another set of stairs that led up to an open air roof. The children would constantly run up the stairs to the roof whenever they felt like leaving the classroom. There was no real structure to the days. Also, they were allowed to leave whenever they wanted to. The smallest details would surprise me the most, not having markers or pencils, to not having a time when the school day came to a close. Experiencing this made me doubt my assumptions of, of foreign education. Is this the way all foreign education systems are? How will the students have enough exploration 
with exploration, with education, to become something they aspire to. Are they going to stay in school since they are forced to go now? Is the system oppressive? With further examination and in their education system, I began to realize that they don't have the means to get a better education they, than they can afford now. Hopefully in years to come, there will be more access to a better schooling system and teacher. But for now, they're still just learning the basics. The biggest lessons I'm taking away from teaching are being patient. If the children don't understand what you're saying, you can find another way to say it. And if they, sorry. <laughs> And as long as the kids are learning something, as long as writing, the, as long, <laughs> whether it's how to spell their name or a new math equation, they are still learning, which is helping them to grow. Ecuador was intriguing. I was, ex I was excited to go to a country where I could communicate with the locals from my prior knowledge of Spanish. At the beginning of the trip, I was very excited to go to Ecuador and knew it would be a patience game and make me concentrate on the other countries to my fullest, while keeping in the back of my head that I would get there soon. We, picked, we got picked up from the bus station in Santo Domingo by a pickup truck with enough room for all of us to fit in the back along with our luggage. Bu was a cute village and that had a very strong sense of community and family work. A man wearing a skirt made of wound string named Alfonso greeted us. He was the community leader of the indigenous tribe of the Satchelan, Bua. Bua had a tropical feel as well as a village one. Banana trees lined the streets on both sides of the roads, some branches poking out further than others. As we drove past the houses, I saw good-sized yards with a yard outside, good-sized houses with yards more than half the size of the house for the kids to play outside. We got to the cul-de-sac where, where most of us got out to greet our families for the unit. We were greeted by smiling faces and open arms by our last host family. We put our bags in the bedrooms and went to explore around our new environment. The first day of work in each country is always surprising in some way. We got picked up and told, were told by Sam we had to walk to work the first day. We got picked up and were told by Sam we had to walk to the first work site in the morning. All of us had our backpacks, and some were holding post hole diggers, and we started walking. Once we finally arrived at the site, there were about 70 pl plants in plastic bags leaning against a tree. We got a lay of the land and were assigned our job as planters, distributors, or diggers. The work started well. Everyone was excited to be doing a new job, but the heat of the Ecuadorian sun quickly masked that. I was the warmest I had ever been in February before. In Ecuador, it was the first time I had felt that my volunteering was benefiting a community. I was helping alongside the families that lived in our coal sack to plant their trees. Being able to work with our families and as one of the big groups, being able to work with our families and as one big group made the connections easier to form. I made the strongest connections with my Ecuadorian host family because I took the time to talk to them. Uh, seeing as I knew a language they could speak as well. What ways does the Satchel community act with each other that make me question my community and life back home? What role does human interaction play within the environment? What makes the culture so rich in Bua? Does the community come before family in this situation? Discovering so much about the world and the issues smaller communities face has led me to become very passionate to preserve culture and a sense of community in which I live. Being able to go back home with the many new thoughts and ideas of how I can better my life is very exciting to me. I will be able to make small changes with the way, around the way I live while still being comfortable and grateful for the things that I have. It is very important for me to keep reminding myself that even the smallest chore can make a long difference can make a big difference in the long run. That will make me the proactive agent of change I desire to become. I want to become a proactive agent of change because I have experiences and lessons to share with others that will spark a new sense of creativity and hope within them and me. 
My definition of an agent of change is a person that intertwines their thoughts with their actions to create even the smallest difference with the purpose to, to affect many others. I have some ideas on how to do this. I plan to introduce the new ways of being environmentally sustainable with food and waste that I learned on this trip, such as recycling more often, not using water and electricity as much, and food waste. I will cut back on my lengthy showers and turn off the lights when I don't need them. I used to just throw out food like it was nothing, but now that I have seen people around the world that are struggling, it makes me more conscious to keep them in the back of my mind and take smaller portions. People's ears perk up when I first speak now. It, it makes me proud that the fear and nervousness gets washed away by the support and community I now have gained with my TBB family. I am not afraid to share my own ideas and questions with people anymore. I am not a wallflower anymore. This journey has transformed me into a wildflower. I am more vulnerable, vulnerable, open, and confident, yet still have questions flow through me. How will I impact my college environment? How will I be an ambassador to grassroots businesses? What is my role in bettering the environment? How will I fulfill my role as an active agent of change throughout my lifetime? Thank you. Would you do it again? Yes. <laughs> I would. <laughs> change in terms of the curriculum or the readings or seminars. Um, I really gained a lot of thinking and like processing through the seminars that really helped me to understand why I had taken a gap year and why I was in these countries doing what I was doing. Um, and that just made me really feel good about taking a gap year. Are you excited for, um, like, do you feel like since you, because I had a lot of friends in my year that were kind of the same way, they, like, were pretty quiet at the beginning, and then we couldn't get them to stop talking, and so <laughs> by the end, which is awesome, I loved it, um, but, like, they were really excited to, like, kind of transfer that into, like, going into college, and do you feel like you're, like, more prepared to, like, speak up and, like, talk in class and stuff? Most definitely. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> yes. For sure. What are your future interests? Do you have any idea what you're going to major in school? Um, or does this in any way relate to this past year? <laughs> um, I would like to look into international development and also either um, international politics or something environmental. I haven't quite laid a finger on what I want to do yet, but something along those lines. <laughs> so this year was instrumental in, yes. in your future direction? Yes, now. very much. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a question yet. I'm still part of it. I'm still thinking about it. Although I was interested if there's anything you personally want to do. I just wanted to comment to your family also. It's just oh, I get like emotional. <laughs> the transformation of watching you from the beginning to here is just it's astounding. And you all must be so proud. Thank you. Even like the transformation just of seeing your thoughts come together, um, working on this speech is just your poise and um, the sincerity with which you speak is just, it's beautiful. I'm so excited to see what you do next. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Thank you. Let's put a red button again. Yeah.